Good morning, friends. Happy, I think this is Tuesday. Happy Tuesday morning. It is a beautiful day outside. The sun is shining. It's in a cloud in the sky, and I am so happy that you are here with me today. If you are here joining us, make sure you say hello in the comments section or give a nice little wave. It looks like Morgan and Jackson is here. Hello, Morgan and Jackson. Nice to see you. Hi, Fiona and Renzo. Nice to have you with us today also. Well, I don't know about you, but did you know that today is a special day? Can you guess what it is? Bum, ba da bum. It is Wacky Wednesday, but it's also it's April Fool's Day. Happy April Fool's Day. Did I get any of you? Yes, no. Were you a little bit confused in the morning um, just now? Maybe yes, maybe no. Hello, Luca and George. Good to have you with us. Well, that was just a small little silly prank that you could play with your family members. Did anybody do anything tricky this morning for April Fool's Day? Did anybody have a frozen bowl of cereal with frozen milk in it? I saw that trick, that was pretty funny. Hello, Houston family from Florida. Good to have you with us. We miss you, come back soon. Hello, Sammy and Will. Nice to have you with us also. Hope you guys are having a fantastic morning. Well, today is April Fool's Day, so it's gonna be a little bit Silly today, and that's all right. It's Wacky Wednesday. Oh, wait, no, is it Wednesday? I can't even, I don't even know what day it is. Anyways, it doesn't matter. We're here with you. I think it's, I honestly can't remember. That's hilarious. Anyways, I know it's a school day, which means that you have some work to do, but hopefully today you get a chance to be a little bit silly with your family members. Whether it's outside or inside, make sure to look up some fun kid appropriate. Um, April Fool's Day jokes to play on your family members. So fun. Good morning, family. Polling family from across the street. I'm glad to have you with us. I heard you celebrated a birthday yesterday, so happy birthday. Hope it was filled with lots of cakes and balloons and fun things. Hello, Tylee and Kayla. Good to have you with us also. Nice to see you. All right, so Today's book is a little wacky, it's a little crazy, so get ready for that. But before we read, we need to get our bodies ready to listen. So should we do it backwards because it's Wacky Wednesday? Hello, Nina, good to have you with us from Washington State. Should we go backwards since it's April Fool's Day? What do we normally do first? We take a deep breath, so okay, everybody exhale. And now inhale. I guess it doesn't really matter. Stretch. We are going to stretch a little bit. That feels nice. Okay, roll those shoulders up forward this time instead of backwards. You could do a little bit. I think normally we tilt to this side first, so let's go the other way. And have a nice stretch. Roll down and around to the other side. Give a nice stretch. Okay, we actually have to do a rainbow breath up because it feels so nice to get that oxygen flowing. Together, here we go. Up, reach to the sky, wave hello to all of your friends out there and down. Okay, let's get ready to read our wacky story today for April Fool's Day. Today's story is, what if you had an animal nose? And look at this, so silly. What if you had an elephant's trunk for a nose? This book is being read with permission from Scholastic. What if one day when you woke up and looked in the mirror, the nose on your face wasn't yours? What if overnight a wild animal nose took its place? Good morning, Samantha from Karate. Good morning to 
Aiden and McKenna. Here's my little squeeze for you. Good morning, Nolan. A tapir. A tapir is a plant-eating animal with a very handy nose. Its nose moves and bends to grab leaves off a branch or push fruit into the tapir's mouth. A tapir's nose is joined with its upper lip. It bends and moves so well because it's made of muscle. Once a nose is that big and movable, it's called a proboscis. That's a fun word, proboscis. This is what a tapir looks like. Fun fact, tapirs mainly eat at night, so they bend their noses in all directions to sniff out food in the dark. Look at that, huh? If you had a tapir snout, you could catch a home run ball, even with your hands full. Cottontail rabbit. A rabbit's nose is packed with smell sensors, and rabbit noses twitch for many different reasons. A rabbit wiggles its nose up and down to pull more air in when it sniffs. That helps it find food or tell when hungry hunters are close by so it can hop to safety. A rabbit's nose twitches faster when it is interested or excited, sometimes as many as 120 times a minute. Fact, rabbits have long, super sensitive whiskers on either side of their noses. These whiskers help rabbits feel if a space is big enough to squeeze through, even in the dark. Good morning, Gemma, Westland, Pierce, and Ford. Hello, good to have you with us. So this is the Cottontail Rabbit. And if you had a rabbit's nose, your twitching nose would show your school spirit. How fast can you twitch your nose? Probably not 120 times a minute. That would be super fast. An elephant. An elephant's nose may be the most useful nose on the planet. It's so long and special, it even has its own name, a trunk. An elephant's trunk can sniff smells from lots of directions, even from up high. It can lift and carry something as heavy as a big log. An elephant also uses its trunk to pull in water as much as two gallons at a time. Then it sprays a drink into its mouth or gives itself a shower. Hmm. Fact, the tip of an elephant's trunk works like fingers. It can pick up something as little as a peanut and pop it in its mouth. There's the elephant. And if you had an elephant's trunk, you wouldn't need to go to a water park in the summer. So fun. Grizzly bear. A grizzly bear's nose is packed with smell sensors. No wonder this bear is a champ at tracking down food, sometimes from over a mile away. It needs to find and eat all the food it can before winter. That's when a grizzly bear goes into a deep sleep called hibernation and usually doesn't eat at all. Fact. The smell sensing areas in a grizzly bear's nose are a hundred times bigger than a human's. That's amazing. That little grizzly bear. Grizzly bears aren't really little, huh? If you had a grizzly bear's nose, you could sniff out all your favorite goodies and only trick or treat at the best houses. So fun. A warthog. A warthog's nose isn't pretty, but it's the perfect food finder. First, the warthog uses its strong sense of smell to sniff out the underground roots and bulbs it likes to eat. Then the warthog rolls its nose around to dig into soft soil with some help from its tusks. Finally, the warthog uses its nose to lift dirt out of the hole until it finds the roots or bulbs to munch. Fact, warthogs greet each other with the nose to nose bumps. You could do that today, that would be kind of funny with your family members. If you had a warthog's nose, you would never need anything but your nose to build sandcastles. Are you thinking about which nose that you would like to have? Let's see. Okay, Sega is a sheep-sized antelope with a proboscis nose. 
Its proboscis is lined with hairs and snotty mucus, ugh, making it perfect for filtering out dust. That's important because the Sega's homeland is often dry and dusty. Herds of Sega's live together and kick up a lot of dust traveling in search to eat. Fact, some Sega's live in parts of Russia where winters are very cold. The Sega's big nose heats up icy air as the Sega <sighs> breathes in. Look at that silly nose. If you had this nose, you would never notice when a room was dusty. Oh, he might need to blow your nose a lot though. Gross. Okay. This is the one page that I don't like <clears throat> because I don't like rodents very much. Okay. This is a star-nosed mole. A star-nosed mole is a small burrowing animal that uses its nose to find dinner in the dark underground and sometimes even underwater. The star-nosed mole uses its nose to smell, but it also uses it to feel for food. Its nose has 22 fleshy rays around its nostrils. They're always moving and quick as a blink. The, bull, the mole knows if its nose touches food like a worm or insect. Oh, you ready for this picture? Look at that animal. Hmm, interesting. Fact, to smell underwater, the star-nosed mole blows bubbles, then sniffs, pulling the air bubbles into its nose past its smell sensors. Blah. Look at that. If you had a star-nosed mole's nose, you could find a midnight snack without turning on the kitchen light. Happy to turn the page. A rhinoceros. A rhinoceros is the only animal with a horn on its nose. It's made up of layers of keratin, the same stuff that human hair and fingernails are made of. Male rhinos use their horns to duel for mates. Females use theirs to guard their babies. Besides having a horn, a rhino's nose has a keen sense of smell to find leaves and fruits to eat. They can also sniff for enemies like lions. Here's your rhino. Fact, a baby rhinoceros isn't born with a horn, but one soon starts growing and never stops. If you had a rhinoceros's nose, you'd be the perfect bodyguard. Giant anteater. What looks like a giant anteater's long nose is really its upper and lower jaws joined together. Its nose is on the tip of this long tube. This nose is perfect for poking into hard to reach places to sniff out yummy insects like ants and termites. A giant anteater also uses its long nose like a snorkel when it goes swimming so it can breathe while underwater. Here's the anteater. Fact, when it smells insects, the giant anteater flicks its super long tongue in and out quickly, as many as 160 times a minute, and eats bugs by the thousands. How fast can you stick your tongue out? Out and in, and out and in, hmm, funny. If you had a giant anteater's nose, you could go scuba diving without a snorkel. Barrette's horseshoe bat. A barrette's horseshoe bat's nose makes a, it a super nighttime bug hunter. Like other bats, a barrette's horseshoe bat hunts by snorting high-pitched noses out its nose and listening for echoes of anything around them. Do you guys know what that word is? Echolocation. I think that's a big kindergarten word, echolocation. But most bats shoot sounds in every direction at once. The shape of this bat's nose channels the sound so it can pinpoint exactly where to snag an insect. Here's the horseshoe bat. Fact. To save energy, a barrette's horseshoe bat often hangs from a branch while snorting noises. When an echo signals an insect is nearby, the bat flies after it. 
If you had a Barrett's horseshoe bat's nose, you'd catch every fly that tried to spoil your picnic. Hammerhead shark, we only have a few more. A hammerhead shark's nose is only for smelling, not breathing. The shark swings its head side to side, forcing water into a nostril near each eye. Because its nostrils are so far apart, the shark can tell if a fishy scent is stronger to the left or to the right, then it tracks down its dinner. Fact, a hammerhead shark can smell blood from a wounded prey as far as a half a mile away. That's incredible. If you had hammerhead shark's nose, you would always know the best places to fish. A wild animal's nose could be cool for a while, but you don't use your nose to spray water or to dig in the ground. You don't need your nose to catch flies or to be a snorkel while you swim underwater. And you'll never grab anything with your nose, no matter what. So if you could keep a wild nose for more than a day, what kind would be right for you? Did you guys hear any nose, noses that you'd like to try today? Hmm. Luckily, you don't have to choose. The nose on your face will always be a people's nose. It will be what you need to breathe and sniff all the scents around you. It's the perfect place to rest glasses if you need them to see better. Best of all, your nose is just what you need to look like you. What does your nose do for you? Your nose starts with nostrils. I'm going to show you these pictures so you can see a little bit up close. It's a diagram. Inside are passages lined with hairs and coated with mucus. That's not. Together, these catch dust, germs, and pollen from plants that could bother your lungs or even make you sick. Then you sneeze or blow out what your nose catches. Meanwhile, the air you breathe in also becomes warmer and wetter. Mmm, yummy. That smells good. Way up inside your nose is a postage stamped side patch packed with scent sensors. These send signals to your brain, which let you know what you are smelling. At the same time, air travels down your throat to your windpipe and lungs, so your nose is the main way for you to get the air you need to live, as well as to smell the world around you. Your nose needs you. For your nose sake, you need to be careful what you breathe in. Stay away from cigarette smoke and try not to breathe in fumes from harsh chemicals. If you live in a place where it gets cold, cover your nose with a scarf to shield it from chilly air. If you live where the air is very dry, place a humidifier in your home. That will make the air you breathe moister, which helps to prevent nosebleeds and colds. And if your nose feels clogged, blow gently. The end. And there are other books in this series if you like other silly books. There's animal teeth, animal hair, animal feet, animal ears. So silly. So that was our book for today. And today's activity is kind of silly too. Because today is April Fool's Day. Your activity is a joke. Okay. I know a lot of you know that I like to bake. So... What I did was I got my little baking pan and I said, hey guys, I made some brownies. Do you want any? And look what I made inside of it. Bum, bum, bum. They are a bunch of... <laughs> They're brownies. Ah, it's just a silly joke. Now there are other silly jokes that you can do for April Fool's Day as well. I don't know if some of you have the little bugs or spiders, little play ones. You can put those around the house to surprise your family members. I also had a friend who one year, she got Brussels sprouts and covered it in frosting and sprinkles and put them on a cake pop stick and said, oh, here you go. And it was hilarious to see a frosting covered Brussels sprout trying to be eaten, eaten when you think it's a cake pot pop. 
So you could also do things like put a little piece of um, plastic, unscrew the shampoo bottle cap and put it in and put it over that so when they try and do shampoo for a shower, it doesn't come out. Now before you do any tricks, you have to make sure that it is safe for the people around you and that it's something where you won't hurt someone's feelings also. You might need to ask an adult for some help. So have fun today. Happy April 1st. I don't know what day it is, but I know that it is April 1st. It felt like March was super long. If you have any other ideas, go ahead and put them in the comment section so other people can try them out on their families. Hope you had a great time today. Hope you're a little silly today. Um, and to remember these two things. One, you're never alone. Thankfully, there are people around you, even though it can get a little bit lonely, you're not alone. And thank goodness, because who else would you prank if you were all by yourself? And the second thing to always remember is to wash your hands and keep your distance. I will see you back here tomorrow, 8.30, whenever that is. Hope you guys have a fantastic day and I can't wait to see what sort of jokes you played on your families. Have a good one.